to follow just a bit of part you know towards the end so interesting discussion um kumar ji i may have a good solution for you on the, that regard so stay tuned on that i'm going to touch upon that okay a little bit from here so welcome everybody a very warm good morning good evening to all of you welcome to today's edition of daily wisdom from bhagavad gita uh, we are doing some recap for the benefit of participants who have not attended or started this when we started this session so i'm doing to do some key highlights um, we started off with why to read bhagavad gita what is it that we stand to gain from bhagavad gita and now we will spend some time going through the key highlights of chapter 1 chapter 2 so that you have a mental map of where we are and we can continue from there and like we always do the key concepts uh, in chapter 2 and the previous chapters we keep on rehashing it from time to time because it's never enough so if we start a series of karma yoga or if we start a series of anger management or if we start a series of uh, you know how does our mind work with regards to attachment and greed all that stuff um, there's always something new that comes up and then we learn out of it so welcome again everyone um, let me share my screen and we will get started with uh, after an invoking the blessings of god and guru and then get started with today's session so let me share my screen all right is everything all right uh yes okay great okay so we'll get started with our opening prayers guru brahma guru vishnu guru dev ईश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरुवे नम वसुदेव सुत देव कंसचाणुर्मर्दन देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु राधे राधे गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन सो टुडे आई पिक्ड अप द वेरी फर्स्ट श्लोक आई थिंक यू शुड प्रॉब्ली हैव इट मेमोराइज बाय हार्ट डजेंट मीन वी आर गोइंग टू गो वन बाय वन बट आई विल बी पिकिंग अप सम की श्लोक फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर फर्स्ट लास्ट एंड पॉसिबली समथिंग इन बिटवीन एज वेल some of the inflection points that we have had in this chapter and go through the key highlights the idea is not to restart from chapter 1 verse 1 but to you know get get give you a gist of what's happening and continue with where we are from chapter 4 so welcome again let's get started from chapter 1 verse 1 okay, i'm getting a little nostalgic when we started off you know, one and a half year back so i'm going to recite it and you're welcome to follow along धृतराष्ट्रुवाच धर्म क्षेत्र कुरुक्षेत्र संवेतायुत्सव मम का पांडवाश्चत संजय वॉलंटीयर्स राधे राधे श्री रामिया जी प्लीज को है राधे श्री रामिया जी राधे राधे सवाचा धर्म क्षेत्र कुरुक्षेत्र समवेतायुत्सव माम का पांडवाश्चवाच संजय थैंक यू वेरी नाइस राधे राधे श्याम जी संध्या जी राधे राधे प्लीज को है राधे राधे धृतराष्ट्र उवाच धर्म क्षेत्र कुरुक्षेत्र समवेतायुत्सव माम कहा पांडवाश्चत संजय वेरी नाइस थैंक यू संध्या राधे राधे वेंकट जी प्लीज को है राधे राधे पद्मा जी प्लीज को है 
धृतराष्ट्र उच धर्म क्षेत्र कुरुक्षेत्रे समेतायुत्सवा मांडवाच धर्मक्षेत्रेत्रेतायुत्सव मांडवाश्चत संजय राधे 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 ओके वी कैन टेक रियल क्विक श्यामजी धृतराष्ट्र धर्मक्षेत्रेत्रेतायुत्सव माम का पांडवाश्च किं कुर्वत संजय राधे राधे नाइस राधे राधे श्याम जी धर्म क्षेत्र कुरुक्षेत्र समेतायुत्सव माम का पांडवाश्च नर्वसनेस हेयर with a soft corner for his own sons and he's asking sanjay let me know what's happening here right so we'll we'll get more into that okay let's take the remaining hands yes riya ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe riya dhritarashtra uvacha dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yuyutsavah धृतराष्ट्र उच धर्म क्षेत्र कुरुक्षेत्र समेतायुत्सव धर्म क्षेत्र कुरुक्षेत्र समेतायुत्सव माम का पांडवाश्च किमकुर्वत संजय Let's give Vijay ji a chance. I see a new hand today, and he's turned his video on as well. So, Vijay ji, good to have you on the session. Could you please? Vijay ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Dhrutarashtra vacha, dharma kshetre kuru kshetre, samaveta yuyutsava, mama ka pandavas chayva, kima kurva da sanjaya. Very nice, <coughs> Vijay ji. Where are you joining us from? I'm joining from Erie near Buffalo. Okay, good to have you on. Is it your first session today? The second. Okay, the okay, second. Welcome to the session. Glad to have you on board, and you get the best debut award in recitation today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I see so many new names today. Yeah, uh, is that name? okay if I I see sure. um, then, Anil Kumar ji? Yes, Anil ji, please go ahead. Yes. And turns on the camera. We should give them precedence as well. Yes, Anil ji, please go ahead. Anil ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Dhritarashtr uvach dharmshetre kurushetre sampreta yuyut savaha mam ka pandavascheva kim kruvata sanjaya. Radhe Radhe. Anil ji, where are you joining us from? I'm joining from New Delhi. 
New Delhi. Welcome to the session. You get the joint joint award for the best debut recitation today. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Let's take maybe three more uh, real quick. And we have a good amount of content to cover. So let's maybe take three more hands. Yes. Let's... Lakshmi ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, everyone. Dhritarashtra uvacha, dharma kshetra kuru kshetre, samaveta yutsavaha, mama kaha pandavas chaiva, kima kurvata sanjaya. Very nice. Thank you, Lakshmi ji. We'll take two more and then we'll get started. If we have anybody... Yes, Pramod ji, Radhe Radhe. Please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, Pramod ji. Dhritarashtra uvacha, Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samaveta Yuyutsava Mama Kaf Pandavas Chaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya. Very nice, Pramodji. I see G. Sharmaji has turned on his audio, so a video. So let's give him precedence. Yes. Radhi Radhi, Sharmaji, please go ahead. Sharmaji. Dharma Dhritarashtra Uvacha. Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samaveta Yutsavaha Mama Kaha Pandavas Chaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya. Thank you very much. Parmaji, where are you joining us from? Hyderabad. Welcome to the session. Thank you so much. All right, I see one more Chirag Ji, I think is a new name. We can take him real quick. Yes. Or, Sai or Sairam Ji, uh, I think is a new name. Let's quickly yeah. take everybody. I'll, I'll rush through the content. We'll, we'll spend some extra time. So let's cover everybody. No new hands. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Chirag Radhe. Ji, please Dhritarash, go ahead. Dharma Shetre Kuruk Shetre Samveta Yujut Savaha Mama Kaha Pandavash Chayav Kim Kurvat Sanjaya. Thank you very much, Chirag Ji. Radhe Radhe. Okay, Sai Ram Ji and Akshita. Sai Ram Ji, Radhe Radhe. Please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Dhritarashtravacha dharma kshetre kuru kshetre samaveta yutsavaha mama kaha pandavas chaiva kimakurvata sanjaya. Very nice. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. All right. The last but not the least, Akshata. Yes. Akshata ji, Radhe Radhe. Please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Dhritarashtra uvacha dharma kshetre kuru kshetre. Samaveta Yutsavaha Mama Kaha Pandavas Chaiva Kima Kurvata Sanjaya. Thank, Thank you, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. So, this is the very first shloka, and in this, Dhritarashtra is asking, O Sanjay, after gathering on the holy field of Kurukshetra and desiring to fight, what did my son and the sons of Pandu do? Okay, that is a question that he has posed as the very first shloka here. Uh, not much to discuss here, but we will go through some of the key highlights just to get it going. So what we are going to discuss today is, if you have joined it late, we are going to go through Arjun Vishad Yoga, the dilemma that Arjun is facing. Lord Krishna has not started speaking as yet. Okay, He's just listening to the lamentations of Arjun and we will be able to relate to it as well. So let's move on. Now Bhagavad Gita, if you look at it, it's a, it's a conversation between, it's a dialogue, I would say. It's not a it's not a one-way street. Just listen to me what I'm telling you. It's a dialogue. You know, you say something and then you understand something, then you ask something else, and then there's a back and forth that happens. And during the course of Bhagavad Gita, Arjun is going to refer to Lord Krishna with different names. And it is very contextual. He's, he calls him Madhu Sudan whenever he has a doubt. Because doubt is like a demon in our head. A doubt can really derail our journey. And he says, you have slayed so many demons, so why don't you slay that as well? So Lord Krishna has been referred to many names and so is Krish, uh, Arjun as well. It is very contextual. We'll touch upon some of that, but let's let's understand this is a conversation or a dialogue between Lord Shri, Krishna and Arjun. And it, it starts with a dialogue between King Dhritarashtra and his minister Sanjay. Dhritarashtra was blind, as we know, and he could not leave his palace in Hastinapur, but he really wanted to know what is going on in the battlefield. So this was the first official satellite communication, okay, because of the divine vision Sanjay got that was relayed live to Dhritarashtra. The first remote learning that happened was dum dum when Shiv did that. And this was the first satellite remote relay that happened. 
Okay, so that is how important it was because Sanjay is going to narrate the happenings on the battlefield, including the entire song or of Bhagavad Gita to Dhritarashtra. All right, so next move on. So if you look at the battlefield, it looks pretty intense. Sanjay, he was, let's have a bit of a context on Sanjay. He was a disciple of Sage Vyas and he, uh, who was the epic, who wrote, who was the author of Mahabharat. Yesterday, we celebrated Ganesh Chaturthi and Ganesha was the one who actually wrote it. Ved Vyas was reciting and Ganesha was writing because Ved Vyas said, I need somebody really competent and nobody more com competent than Ganesha who could write it. However, Ganesha put a condition that I will keep on writing, but you will not stop. So Vedvya said, that is fine, but if that is the case, you can write only if you understand, only after understanding. And he, he kept on reciting, he kept on writing. Until Vedvya recite, decided that he has to take some breaks in between. So he put in some kutish shlokas where even Ganesha had to exert his intellect. Okay, that is how it was written. So by the way, Ganesha, Ganesh Tattva is an eternal Tattva. Like Shankar Bhagwan, he came from the forehead of Brahmaji. But Sadashiva an eternal entity. Similarly, Ganesha, although the way we know the story, you know, Parvati and Shiv story, that is fine. But Ganesha is an eternal tattva. Mahaganesh, uh, which Ganesha is an eternal tattva. So much so that when Mother Parvati and Lord Shiv got married, they worshipped Ganesh tattva. Now you would say, how can they worship their own son? These are eternal entities and they are, those are just the Leelas. So anyways, let's move on. Sage Vyas, he, he possessed a mystic ability. He's a, in fact a Vishesh avatar of God himself, Sage Vyas. And then he gave that ability to Sanjay so that he could see what is happening in distant places. And that through that vision or the miraculous power that he got, he was narrating what was transpiring on the battleground of Kurukshetra. So he was giving the first hand account of what is happening on the battlefield directly into the palace. Okay, that is how this whole episode starts. Moving on, let's look at some of the, you know, this is the Kuru dynasty. If you look at it, we'll not get too much into it. The interesting thing here is that uh, Kauravas, Kauravas uh, could celebrate Rakshabandhan because they had a daughter also, sister as well, in case you didn't know. Her name was um, Dushali. And uh, anyways, this is just for an FYI kind of a deal, nothing much to... Yes, Pramodji, you have a question already? As just, a, just a curious question. So when we say Sanjay narrated the entire thing, so when Arjun saw the Vishwaru Darshan, does that, and Sanjay described it, so does that also mean that Sanjay also saw the Vishwaru Darshan? Or, you know, I always had that question. Apparently, yes. Apparently, yes. In fact, Sanjay says, you know what? God is Kish Krishna. I think he refers to him as uh, Vishikesh or Kesha with that particular thing. He says, he's saying such big, big things about himself. Grandiloquence in English, they call it when you, you know, say big, big things about yourself. He says he's saying all that stuff about himself. I'm terrified looking at his feet. But when he's saying that, there's not even a trace of arrogance or pride in it. Okay, you go back and check out the Mahabharata. It is very beautifully captured. So yes, he saw that Vishwa Surupam as well. He was fortunate enough to get that. Because he was narrating it, right? If you look at it, this whole thing was narrated. So yes. Now, Bhagavad Gita is a song of, it was revealed by Lord Krishna to, who were on the threshold of the war of Mahabharata. And this was a decisive battle between two set of cousins, Kauravas and Pandavas. We know that story, right? When even Lord Krishna himself went as a peace messenger, that request was rejected by Duryodhan. He said, forget about five villages. I will not even give them a land worth a tip of a needle. That much arrogance he had. And prior to the battle, both Arjun and Duryodhan had approached Krishna, who had taken a vow not to lift a weapon in that war. They both had approached him because Krishna was their cousin. And his fleet or army, Chaturangi Sena, was one of the best armies in the world at that time. It's like the naval fleet of US. Everybody would like to have that. So both of them went there. And Duryodhan, he was 
you know he was always looking at buying his army because krishna he thought was not going to be of any use is anyway not going to lift any weapon so he had gone for that army and arjun had gone there anyway so whatever happened transpired krishna gave that privilege to arjun to ask and arjun asked krishna for krishna and duryodhan was like okay you got a thumb you know and i got the army what are you going to do with that but that there is a deep lesson in that particular episode because when we go to temple or when we go to god and if we are asking god for what god can give we are being a duryodhan and if we ask god for god that will tilt the scales in our favor like it happened in the case of arjun so the key learning is do we want to be duryodhan where we are asking god for what god can give give me this give me that give me this like that whole bucket list that we usually have or we are asking god for god that is a key thing and which can tilt everything in your favor now let's look at some of the statistics here so if you look at it there are shlokas right there are 700 shlokas in the entire bhagavad gita and this is the split in chapter 1 i mean you don't have to go really key thing is that uh, there is only one shloka spoken by dhritarashtra where he asked kim kurvata right sanjay so this is the only shloka and then if you were to look at it statistically lord krishna he has recited 82% arjun has recited 12 sanjay in between about 6% and dhritarashtra just one shloka okay so that is just a trivia in case you want to capture that um that is how bhagavad gita unfolds and the lion share of course goes to god because we want to listen to god right so it's no surprise there but if you look at it arjun also has a significant number given the fact that god is speaking that means it is a dialogue it is not 100% krishna and 0% arjun so it is a dialogue the dialogue unfolds beautifully and those doubts are very very logical very structured manner he is putting those doubts for our benefit all right so now what was the size of armies on each side let's understand and appreciate the magnitude of the battle that was going to take place there okay so kauravas had 11 akshani sena pandavas had seven akshani sena and total army on both side as you can see was 4 million 4 million people were on the battle ground okay now what does it mean now what is akshani let's look at it one akshani comprises of 21 you can look at the statistics 21000 chariots elephants cavalry infantry total is as you can see uh, about 0.2 million as you can see right that much is one akshani so what is it in a number there is something interesting in these numbers we'll see that as well now furthermore one patti and three patti three sena mukhas and anikis anyways that whole it all teen anikis it takes one akshani these are all some trivia so you may want to if you are interested to look at but nothing major now what's there in, in a number let's look at it so if you look at the akshani number the chariot sum 11 plus 7 the total akshani it adds up to 18 right then furthermore if you look at the total number of chariots and elephants that we are looking at 21870 that also adds up to 18 same thing for cavalry for infantry pretty much everything adds up to 1 plus 8 18 it's a kind of an interesting statistic as well uh, for the battle that was unfolding there so let's move on um let's look at the characters here bhishma now shantanu he stops ganga from drowning their eighth child who who later on goes on to become bhishma so if you look at it bhishma he took a vow of celibacy because the other queen if you look at from a kuru dynasty satyavati she wanted her son to be the king and of she was insecure about bhishma being crowned as a son so he took that um, vow so that the lineage that follows from satyavati continues to be a king and he was a son of shantanu and ganga ganga was the first wife of shantanu and satyavati was another bhishma in sanskrit it means fearsome or one who incites fear so like the gichis dyan uh, tyag bhishma is known for his pratigya or the vows that he would take once bhishma takes a pratigya that that's it he will stick to it you know that that is what bhishma was famous for and he had 
the boon of leaving his life heirs on his own volition nobody could nobody could take life out of him until he himself so desired that is the boon that he had okay. now his name was devrat or gangaputra and he was known for a celibate pledge that he would never marry uh, you know that was to support the pledge that his father made to you know his other queen so that if he won't marry he won't have a kid and then uh, the dynasty that would follow from satyavati would always continue be, be, to be the you know royal in him continue to enjoy the royal inheritance and that is why he and but he took an allegiance oath of allegiance towards the throne of hastinapur that whoever is going to be the king my loyalty and allegiance would remain with that person okay that is the vow that he had taken now he was an unparalleled archer and warrior of his time um, you know and he also handed down the vishnu sahasranama to yudhishthir when he was on his deathbed of arrows in the battle of kurukshetra right so that is who bhishma was and one of the 12 mahajans it's important to know that that bhishma was one of the is known as one of the 12 mahajans like we have panchakanyas in our scriptures there are 12 mahajans and bhishma is one of them not brahma narad shiv bali shuka yama kapila all they are so bhishma is like one of the um, elevated or personalities which are held in accorded a very high stature in our scriptures that is who bhishma was and in fact it is said that bhishma took the side of kauravas to glorify lord because he was himself a rasik saint or a great devotee of krishna and he took the side of kauravas to tell that look on one hand we had bhishma who when completely armored nobody could have defeated him and also he had a boon of leaving his life force only when he so desired and despite somebody who was impossible to defeat was on the side of kauravas alongside the mighty army still the side which had god on the other side who had taken a vow not even to lift a weapon became victorious so that was basically to glorify god even further that look even bhishma could not save kauravas because they were on this other side of god on the side of adharma or unrighteousness all right now let's look at some of the other highlights of conch so when the war took place everybody they this there's a ritual of blowing conches now conch cell there's a science behind that as well sounds and catch so it's a natural vibration that is produced it gets magnified on entering the conch cell so on a lot of occasion it is done that and and in, during the wars also it is done so if we try holding a shank near our ear if you have tried that you would see the humming sound of a ocean that's how it comes and blowing a conch shell you know it has a positive psychological vibrations as well courage determination hope optimism all that stuff happens and that is why it is chosen to be blown even during sacred rites to get rid of negative energy now dev that it's also known as varun shank it was a shank from varun that was given to heavenly gift that was given to arjun during the time period of his exile and he got other other things as well like so his chariot and stuff like that but his conch shell its name was devadat that arjun blew at the time of war okay and he had gotten it from celestial god varun similar to that krishna also had his conch shell and its name was panchajanya or shankhasur so there is a story of an evil sea demon so who had captured the son of his guru sandipani muni so as guru dakshina he rescued from him and uh, you know when he slew shankhasur he took the conch shell from him for himself and that is basically the conch shell of krishna so it's a trivia question it's a panchajanya and whenever krishna blows a conch shell death of the opponent is guaranteed okay it's a guaranteed thing the death of his next opponent that's what it means when he blows blows the conch shell so that's a quick story on that that i had touched upon so i thought i'll bring it to today's session as well i'm just setting the context for some of the key highlights for this uh, session now once they were blown when the war started then these conch shells 
that Kauravas were having, they were material. And it is said that the conch shells blown by Bhishma and in the hands of Krishna and Arjun, they are defined as divine conch shells. They were not ordinary conch shells. And this sound itself was so thunderous that uh, even, you know, Sanjay relayed his, you know, that it actually, even Dhritarashtra felt the reverberations of it and felt scared. That is how th thunderous they were on the side. And uh, Lord Krishna, whichever side he's on, you know, it's, it's, it's for, you can take it for like, Sanjay is going to narrate further down in Bhagavad Gita that in whichever side Lord Krishna and Dhanurdhar Arjun is there, victory is assured on that side. Okay. Now, Lord Krishna has been referred to as Madhav as well. It is referred to two words, Ma plus Thav. So basically, he is the husband of Lakshmi. So we worship Lakshmi on the Diwali, but we forget the husband. Right? So if you worship God, Lakshmi would anyway bestow her grace on you. That is the concept here. He is Lakshmi is nothing but Lord Vishnu's wife. And Lord Vishnu is nothing but one of the planetary expansion of Krishna himself. And Madhav, when he's referred to as Madhav, he's indirectly signifying that the prosperity is on the side of Pandavas and that they will be triumphant in this war and reclaim their kingdom soon. So he's providing those omens to Dhritarashtra all along by referring to Krishna with certain names, to Arjun with certain names. So it, it, it was almost like Sanjay was internally convinced where this head, where what the result or the outcome of this war is going to be like. Okay. Now let's move on. Anyways, uh, now this uh, Arjun, he was a mighty warrior and he was one of the best archers of his time. And even his chariot was gifted to him from Agni. I'll tell you that story maybe in some other session and Celestial God of Fire. And it was built by Vishwakarma, the architect of demigods. And it was very, very powerful. In fact, you know what happens when the war is over? Lord Krishna tells Arjun to get off the chariot first. Arjun doesn't understand why. Now, he gets off the chariot and then there is a Kapi Dhvaj. Hanuman is there on his flag as well. He also gets off and the moment Krishna gets off the chariot, the chariot is burnt. That means it was already in that state. It was only through Krishna that he was holding that chariot. So, same thing happens during the war with Karan as well. You know, when they were aiming bows at each other and having that exchange. So, when Arjun was sending the bow, Karna's Rath would go a few feet back. And then when Karna would shoot an arrow on his chariot, it would, you know, move by a few inches or shake just a little bit. But Krishna would clap and say, wow, you know, to Karna. So Arjun was like, why are you giving so much of uh, acknowledgement to what Karna is doing and not to me? Because I'm able to move his chariot so much and he's barely able to shake it, my chariot. He said, understand. First of all, you have Hanumanji sitting on your thing, right? Secondly, I am on this and still Karn has so much of power that he's able to shake your chariot. And thirdly, his chariot was not an ordinary chariot. It was given to him by, uh, you know, Agni God and the architect of that chariot was Vishwakarma himself. And still Karna's prowess was so much that he was able to shake it during the battle. All right, so let's continue to move on. These are some of the few things. Now, let's wear our thinking hats on because this is where we will get some learning learnings from this chapter, okay? I'll, I'll bring in some more aspects of this chapter tomorrow, but let's, uh, let's appreciate or try to understand what's going on here, okay? Now, which of the two is relatively easier to handle? Let's understand this. Okay, that's where I want you to participate and get your thought process going. The first one is a warfare requiring high intensity and precision with sophisticated skills and something which is a matter of life and death. This thing or dealing with job, studies, daily course, people, relatives, health problems, etc., which one do you think is relatively easier to handle? Yes, yes Sam. Yes. Happy to answer as well. Nitinji, for me, first one is easier. 
Which one? First one about warfare requiring high intensity and precision and sophisticated. I'm not surprised with your answer and could you please explain why? Could you please explain why? Precision means it's not like you will go and blow yourself up like a suicide bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Only once I'll kill my opponent. Either I will live or I'll die. That's it. Okay, okay. Fair enough, fair <laughs> That's enough. why it's easy. Fair enough. Anybody else who wanted to add some flavor to it? And then I will add a couple of other questions as well. Yes, Shamji. Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. So nice one, nice one, Nitin Bhai. I too go with uh, Samji because it's easy to deal with the warfare than to deal with the daily affairs, daily chores, relatives. I really can't read their minds, but in warfare, I know what my goal is, Lakshya is. But in, in daily life, I I do know my goal, but I do not know my goal also. To deal with everything, everything is telling to me. That's the way it goes. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. Okay, all right, two, two, zero already. Nice. Let's look here from Chiragji as well. Yes, Chiragji, Radhe, Radhe, please go ahead. I guess both are equally difficult because then both we need complete consciousness and good self-discipline. Mm -hmm. So I'll say both are equally difficult. So it's nothing like that war is easy or daily jobs are easy. Okay. No, That's fair both require yeah, some level of that. Great point. Yes, Vijay yes. and Swati ji, you wanted to. Yes, Vijay ji, go ahead, please. Vijay ji, please go ahead. Yeah, I would say the daily, uh, dealing with job studies, daily chores, uh, and people are easier because it actually gives you multiple chances to win over it. It's like a test match. Even if you have a one bad session, you already have, you can actually come back. So that's where, um, you know, this Gita is calling me, right? So warfare, it is very tactical in nature. If you have, uh, if, you, if you have your name on the warhead or the weapon, you're basically gone and doesn't give you another chance. So I would uh, rather prefer to, although it is tedious and uh, you feel frustrated and have a lot of self-pity on yourself, uh, it is better to go with uh, the chores. That's how I view it. All right. Fair enough. Yes, uh, Swati ji, let's quickly hear that. and let Yes, me... Swati ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. I think the second, yeah, second one is a little difficult because there are daily challenges, daily different problems we have to face and then you have to overcome them and then daily next day another problem will be there in the other field. So mm. that is more challenging. Okay. All right. Yes, Ratnaji. So Nitinji, my vote goes uh, that easier is to dealing with job and studies. Okay. And um, I think it is very tough being in war. And definitely both sides are equally tough, but being in war is very tough. I That's what I, I would go with. Possibly. We all have fought that war of Kurukshetra. Who remembers? Who knows, right? And gone to Swarga afterwards and then came back here again. Who knows? <laughs> right? Whoever died on the battlefield, for the sake of duty, they go to, at least for a temporarily, they go to Swargloke. And then they come back. Yes, let's hear from other participants. Yes. Ratnaji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. And let me add a couple of other questions just to spice up the discussion a little more. So losing your near and dear one through your own hands by slaying them versus losing your near and dear one once. So in one case, you lose that, right? That's a fact of life. In other case, no, you lose it, but you lose it by doing it through your own hands. And third question, let me add giving up on your own self-esteem or catering to your own self-esteem and pride? These are the three questions I posed and I'll get into that, but let's hear from participants um, to get this discussion going. Yes, Sandhya ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, Radhe Radhe. Yeah, I think the, the second uh, set of points that you added was what I was actually coming to. Like if attachment angle comes into the picture, then I think the decision can change. Uh, otherwise, like for the first part, I also felt that, uh, you know, whenever, like, because we have our mind attached to people whom we deal with every day, that's why it becomes more difficult. But now then that you have added it to the warfare as well. So I think they are, I, I now feel that the warfare one is more and more difficult because you have to take call of, uh, dealing with your attachments very, very clearly, directly. Yeah. 
somebody who has given your his blood and sweat and his lap to you now you're supposed to kill him right let me add that to the mix and what do you think sam ji are you still ruthless or have you <laughs> think of heart now sam ji please go ahead no, no. yeah i mean no definitely no i cannot kill my own all right a family <laughs> Here from other, uh, I see one. Yeah, more. very interesting discussion going on. Radhe Radhe Kumar ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe everyone. So, um, my first choice was uh, the war would be easier, but there is a third option which I think would be much easier. Of course, war. You know, my conscience will kind of not allow me to kill. So, um, the second one we know all. We all are in this. Uh, materialistic world and we struggle and suffer third one is what uh, the path which swami ji took i think that one would be the easiest one except that we don't have the knowledge nor the you know enlightened mind to choose that our our past karmas to help us through that you think the path so, swami ji took is an easy path yes up. that is the no that that is the uh, easy path in the sense that uh, smartest path i would say your remark on smartest part i think uh, not not having that hook of marriage is probably in hindsight a very smartest thing for you right i have a solution for you right so one of the easy ways to live that experience vicariously is to get your marriage dvd play it in the rewind okay when you play it in the rewind you will see how you walk out of it after reversing all the seven <laughs> i know there is i think someone well, there is a video about that too right someone was saying that Yeah, so someone suggested you, that idea but that then as many times as you want but yeah but yeah are, I, i'm i don't think that will help but i think the second option which you said right uh losing your near and dear ones through your own hands by slaying them well these people were really were they near and dear really these people were you know they were persecuted really badly right the pandavas the core was try to kill them so hey i would have well you know again my conscience might not allow me to kill but i would rather kill them than, you know the other one i will get to that get into that yeah fair point kumar ji let's hear from ratna ji uh, ratna ji radhe radhe please go ahead uh, radhe radhe uh, i think so there are a few components when we are dealing with either warfare or the everyday life like the self discipline and there is a leader and a regiment is following the leader without uh, questioning a lot at least and uh, that way you know the pride the question of uh, pride and uh, self esteem doesn't come there they know that there are procedures that and they do practice what they are supposed to do i mean that's kind of a set in stone but whereas uh, <laughs> so whereas when it comes to our own lives i think there are all these things it's left to us and i think that is why it is very difficult for us when it's left to us uh so i think uh, that is why we feel warfare is easy um uh, and uh, you know dealing with the day to day stuff is very difficult but i think somewhere we need to bring in these components which is again not easy when we bring in these uh, i think it can become a little easier but it takes a lot of courage self motivation and uh, uh i think we don't want to deal with so many overwhelming aspects and since it is we it's our own life and we are not following anyone uh, i mean on every thought uh, process i think it makes it a little difficult for us all right the reason i brought in these things let me add some color to it and then we can take the discussion forward here now the one of the concepts that has been repeated in bhagavad gita throughout this the uh, uh, call that uh, the continuity right like lord krishna is telling arjun sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmar yuddha cha tasmat sarveshu kaleshu so basically it's like all the time the ideal desired state is for us to have that consciousness 
that God is there. He is my protector and he is my witness. Our consciousness needs to be united with God. And the common argument that comes is, how can we do that when we are doing our work? When we are doing our work, how can you think of God and at the same time do your work? IT work, cooking work, study work, whatever that work is. So what I'm trying to draw the parallel here is, if somebody can practice that in a skill or an art where very sophisticated skill is needed, you know, he's not fighting, Arjun is not fighting ordinary people. He's not killing mosquitoes on the battlefield. He's up against Drone. He's up against Bhishma. He's up against Karan and Maharathi, Atirathi. We'll talk about those as well. That requires a complete, you know, all the skills that you have learned, bringing it to the fold, complete concentration, and a lot of sophistication, precision work is there. Right? And if that person can do that, for our stuff that we do, we cannot really put it as an excuse that it is not possible. My work is much more complicated and stressful than what Arjun was doing. And there is a reason why God chose battlefield to impart this message. He could have chosen any other field. He could have simply imparted that message on the comforts of the palace, right? Arjun was his friend. There's a reason he chose the battlefield. So he's telling us, he's telling us if Arjun could do that in that kind of a scenario, none of us can actually claim our situation is much more stressful than what Arjun is feeling. Okay. That means he's already set the bar to the maximum stressful situation possible for a human being. I, I don't think anybody, anything can be. Now it requires your concentration. It requires your focus. It requires bringing your skills to the fore where you cannot say, I will be mediocre. Now that I have so much of tension, so many things to think about, I will not be able to perform to the best of my ability. He has to do all that, including remembering God all the times. So that is the first part. The second part is losing your near and dear one. Agreed. Kauravas obviously will not have a soft corner for Duryodhan and other, right? In fact, we may have taken some gory walls that I'm going to break his this and that. But think about his own guru whom you have learned from, Dronacharya, Bhishma Pitama. He used to, they used to play on his lap and they, he always used to love Pandavas and all. Point here I'm trying to bring about is that one thing is losing somebody. Second thing is you are responsible to kill them and then lose them, right? Which one is more difficult of you know, when you have to slay them, when you have a soft corner for them. Look at Bhishma Pitama, the way he had to put arrows in him when he was not even defending himself. A warrior... Won't his pride take a beating? You know, what am I doing? That too, who's worship worthy for me. Same thing with Karan. He never got a fair chance to tell the world or to prove in history that he was better than Karan. And Arjun used to take a lot of pride in his archery, right? And when the moment came, Krishna denied him that. He said, when you will not be able to defeat him, when he's fully armored and he has his chest in front of you. Now that you have his back, go and shoot him. Unless you are in a safe state of surrender, leaving aside your self-esteem, pride, ego, your own sense of accomplishment, you cannot do that act. And that is all what Arjun did on the battlefield. He was completely surrendered to Krishna at that point. So it was not an, just try to live through Arjun's mind. You know, if a normal person has to go through that, See, we, we think of it as a story. So, well, okay, Krishna did that, Arjun did that, Arjun was told, so he did. Think of it, it's not an easy situation to be. Like, first of all, his mouth was drying. Tomorrow I'm going to touch upon what happens to Arjun. There is called an Ashta Satvik Bhav, which comes into saints when they, when they experience God. And then there is something called Ashta Satvik Vikar. That is what Arjun was suffering from. His mouth started drying, his skin started burning. And his Gandhi with his hand started trembling and the bow slipped out of his hand. And he was so despondent at that moment and called himself as his disciple to Krishna. And that's when Krishna started his discourse. Right? That is the state of Arjun, complete despair and despondency. That is the state he reached. But think about it. If you were in Arjun's position, how critical and stressful that situation would have been. And... He was able to lift himself from that despair after listening to the discourse and actually perfected his surrender you know, during that time period. 
and that is where krishna is beckoning us to do that he's setting that example that bar that if arjun could do that around that time there are so many things to look at that and think of arjun how much his ego and pride would have taken a beating the way he was asked to kill bhishma the way he was asked to kill karan and so many other things that happened during the course of the war okay now let's take a few more hands and you know beautifully explain nitin ji thank you so much yeah right. uh, can i take some uh, uh, new names uh, for it yeah. by the way i, I wanted see. to call out about the retreat real quick if you have not signed yes. up, please do that it's a very nominal price i believe 50 bucks here at us and 500 rupees here at in india it's a great way to um, you know tune into bhagavad gita chapter 7 and as part of that retreat we are also going to celebrate radhashtami so if you have some leela some bhajan some act in mind start preparing for it because soon we will be announcing how we are going to celebrate and online participants we can make it interesting exciting for them so if you have something in mind start thinking about it and uh, we'll be announcing that shortly as well all right yeah i have posted the link for registration in the chat uh, and please uh... please please uh, go ahead and register uh, this is going to be like amazing amazing retreat and this is the last retreat in us as well for uh, swami ji this year right and then he'll go to india yep so in the if we once tomorrow we will touch upon some other aspects of uh, chapter 1 how everybody is approaching this war you know if your pride is talking your arrogance is talking are you nervous about it are you confident about it what are the different moods that are coming up you know when when duryodhan is talking when dhritarashtra is talking when sanjay is talking how everybody is approaching we'll, we'll look at that and a bit of that journey we will do tomorrow and conclude chapter 1 we will not spend a lot of time but at least it will give you a gist of where chapter end one ends and then we will cover a quick gist of chapter 2 as well the entire journey around how krishna starts narrating this mes- message starting from the base who are you the fundamental question right starting with the duties let's start with the duties and then introducing the higher concepts of karma yog karma sanyas and all that stuff so that way you have a good map of where we are uh, what we have covered so far may not be in the entire depth that we have done but at least it will give you an idea and then we will keep revisiting some of the key topics back and forth as we go along Yes. Now let's take the hands um, to take the discussion. Yeah. Over. Thank you for waiting, everyone. Likhit ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, any concern on everyone? Is it audible? Yes. Okay. So, so sir, I would prefer the right hand one, dealing with jobs, duties, studies, and people relatives. uh the thing is that uh with respect to this uh, we can have the checkpoints on our mind's nature and uh, we can focus our mind towards god but when we come towards the warfare war means uh we should be more concentrated uh towards our own mind which is so very much difficult which is uh, very much difficult because uh, we need to act immediate and uh, need to take quick decisions in war so my choice is the right hand one and i have one other question is that uh, sir being a student uh, before i entered this path of spirituality uh, i used to motivate myself uh, in the field of education uh, by thinking about the disadvantages of uh, not being edu- educated and the materialistic uh, and thinking about the materialistic gains if i am educated in this way i used to excel myself in the field of education but after coming to the this path of spirituality uh, the famous word uh, statement called as all were as all works are equal and work is worship so by considering this um, uh, it's becoming somewhat hard to connect my educational goal with the spirituality i used to get uh, when i set my goal uh, for me it's being a good engineer when i set this goal many materialistic things used to come uh, why are you choosing this only why can't you it be the other ones and uh, i'm somewhat getting confused about how can i handle this so i would request you to please help me in this situation how can i connect my goal with spirituality 
Right. I'll try to answer it as best as I possibly can. So basically what you're saying is it's demotivating you in studies, right? Why should I do this? Now, Lord Krishna is exactly tackling that question with Arjun as well. Arjun says to Krishna in chapter 2, if my goal is spirituality, why are you giving me these laddus of fighting a war and having this whole throne? Or even if I die, I will go to Swarg when that is not the goal of life. The goal of life is to attain God. I might as well become a sannyasi. That's essentially what he's telling Lord Krishna. And the Lord Krishna goes on to explain him, no, you have to act in accordance with your gunas. Right? And then when you do that, you uplift yourself spiritually. So don't run away from your duty. Taking spirituality as, a, as an excuse. Everybody is perfectly situated where they need to be. So whatever your duties are, given the station of your life, we have to perform it to the best of our abilities and attach it to a higher purpose. Now, you, you might think of becoming an engineer so that you can earn more, so that you can you know, buy a house and car for yourself, so that you can land a good match, so that you can uh, you know, have a happy family life. End of the day, you are seeking happiness through all these means. But when you start try to understand the deeper principle, the happiness, the true happiness that you are looking for is in God. And when you do it as a service to him, all the acts that you do, you, you want to become the best version of yourself so that you can serve God in the best possible manner, right? Through different means. Then you are started aligning your skills or what you have in life to a higher purpose and also acting in accordance to your gunas. Then you are doing the duty that God expects you to do. Not run away from everything and, and take a sannyas because if that was the case, that happens to people like Swamiji, okay, once in blue moon to people who have acquired enough detachment from this world. It's not everybody's cup of tea. For us, it is called a falgu viragya, an artificial viragya, where we think we can give up everything and, and go to the forest or in a, you know, on mountains and practice spirituality. It will not happen because we have not gone through the, the earlier classes of detaching and purifying ourselves. So as a student, I would say, I mean, you figure out what, what you are good at and do it to the best of your ability so that you are not only, it's like it said that the music that we are endowed with is God's gift to us and realizing that music or that tune is basically our gift back to God. So whatever we can do to the best of our ability pleases God as opposed to we running away from it and finding spirituality as an excuse. So that, that would be my short, I mean, long answer to your short question around this, this concept. So you have to motivate yourself around that. right? Uh, and until you find a real purpose around what you want to do. If you are studying, I would say put your full effort into studies so that you can be successful in life and, and figure out means to serve God through that. There have been a lot of writers, there have been a lot of musicians, a lot of architects who have gone on to do tremendous amount of work because they were inspired as a, you know, their goal was to serve God. So that could be your uh, motivation or spirit around this, I would say. Did I answer you or confuse you more? Likit ji, where are you joining us from, by the way? Likit ji, please go ahead. Hi, sir. I got clarification somewhat. I will think more about it and handle this. Okay, sir. And uh, you asked where I'm joining from, sir. I am from South India, Karnataka. Okay, okay. Got it. Yeah, you can put it in the feedback okay. card. We can have an offline conversation around any specific thing that you have in mind. But what Swamiji says very clearly, whatever station in life you are in, do it to the best of your... But change the motivation behind doing that. Not for your own sake, for your own enjoyment, but for the sake of pleasure of God. It's like a service to God that you're the so that or the reason behind what you do needs to be channelized. Um, and that will bring out the best for, from you as well, you know, in whatever you are doing. As a student, obviously, you need to focus on studies. And then as you get more clarity in life, you will know how to align your work or your day to day stuff to the, you know, the seva of God uh, as you go along that clarity will dawn on you as you go along. But running away from is not an option. That's essentially what Lord Krishna is telling Arjun also. He, he's told to Arjun that even if you run away and go to a forest, because you are a Kshatriya, 
even there you will form a small army and start fighting wars with the tribals so whatever your property your natural guna is we have to act in accordance with that as opposed to trying to imitate somebody else right i think jyoti ji tell told a story that there was a donkey and there was a dog so donkey would do all the hard work during the day and dog will simply bark at night and the master would give shower all the love on the dog donkey thought it's because he barks he gets all the love so next day the donkey starts barking at night and he gets a nice beating so the point is you do things which are tasked to you the particular thing that that pertain to the station of life that you are in as opposed to copying somebody else just because we think that might be better anyways okay. uh, oops brother thank you beautifully explained nitin ji thank you shri ramya ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe shama yeah i uh, radhe radhe i like when we are thinking of the question war even initially i was like uh, with time to thinking yeah, it's better that you either live what i want day instead of every day going to this but then later the other thought passed to me like in ukraine people when the war started it was so bad until then they like uh, i've heard one of the interviews that tell that they didn't realize the gift what they had till the war started like being with the family they used to think that it's daily i'm dealing with it but once the war started that daily life itself became like a gift it so much uncertainty what happens to your kid what happens so you're totally displaced no shelter to live you're living in a tent you're uh, living in a hut and when we are in such a situation we'll really realize that uh, you know whatever we are going through is nothing compared to that and and that moment will start cherishing the gift that uh, we have Uh, usually when when we lose something that is when we'll cherish uh, what we had and uh, and now all of this yeah they seem like a daily have to deal with the daily chores daily dealing with people but uh, these are our gifts if you put it in proper perspective beautiful it's a positive reframing right as they say there's a beautiful story around this like even in covid time there was a guy his actually iris eyes welled up with tears when he saw the bill that he saw right because he was put on that oxygen ventilator for i don't know how many days and of the the hospital slapped the bill of few thousand dollars on him it was a pretty hefty bill by the way 50 to 70 thousand dollars and he had tears in his eyes he said god has been giving me free oxygen for so long and uh, i have not paid for him now it makes me appreciate so the smaller things gifts that we have blessings that we have we forget about that and it is said under ordinary circumstances or ordinary settings extraordinary things are not appreciated that's what happens the fact that we are breathing the fact that we wake up the fact that our body is running when we are sleeping the fact that we get citrus fruit when winters come sets in the fact that wind blows sun comes in we take it for granted they are all blessings and sometimes the smaller problems that we have we try to hype it up so much in our head that we think it's the end of the world for us and there's a there's a very humorous story swami tells about it right there was a girl who who writes a letter to his mom her mom and says mom i wanted to share something terrible with you you know what happened um, i was i was driving the scooty which i had i you know i thought i could steal from my friend for one of the days i was driving it and i fell down and when i fell down i broke my leg and but don't need not worry because there was a guy who came and helped me he was really nice so he gave me all the help and as a matter of fact i fell in love with this guy so we decided to marry but before we could tell you i thought because we are having our first baby i thought we will let you know once we come in the next vacation that we going to have okay and then in that letter because his mother was about to faint in the lower note she had written ps you know by the way i just failed in my physics exam or just putting things in perspective if things have to go wrong how wrong they can get so sometimes small thing we hype up too much considering our problems to be really bad but they are not so bad you know the daily chores and all those challenges are not as bad as what we can actually be subjected to if we are in a war like situation or in uh, you know dilemmas like what is my dharma and adharma to do those kind of situation can get really stressful so just to put things in perspective beautifully said nitin ji thank you all right padma ji yeah radhe radhe yeah we can 
continue um, if we have participants wanted to take up and stuff like that but yeah like we said about usually the last 15 20 minutes we spend on some of the devotional aspect to do some chantings i have a few names from yesterday so but let's conclude our conversation with three hands that we have and then we can spend some time on chanting and wrap up our session absolutely yeah please go ahead but much um just few thoughts the setting the setting and the circumstances where the Mahabharata Yuddha is happening. It's not happening somewhere else. It's actually constantly happening within us, right? There is always this conspiracy and conflict between our mind and our soul, right? Soul being the very purest and mind being the monkey mind. There is always this conflict between good and bad, right and wrong, ego and uh, self-esteem, right? Um, me and God. So there is always this conflict in different forms and different shapes and different levels and different flavors and different colors and different situations and different uh, qualities and different quantities, like in the characters of Mahabharata. Bhishma Pitamaha being such a great elevated soul, still, you know, he was only working for his Swadharma, Dharma, which will only um, um, serve him, but it would not serve somebody else. Um, the demons are within us, right? There is always this conflict that we have between our mind and soul. And whatever, um, as we say, right, whatever we sow is what we reap. So the demons that we have, the tendencies that we naturally throw towards the mind or the soul, um, that kind of dictates where your mind is. If you're leaning towards your soul, you're leaning towards your God. If you're leaning towards the God, then the 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 um, confusion between your mind will simmer down and there is a clarity between your mind and soul where you're much more connected and much more um, close to God and Guru and your your inclination of taking decisions is more from your soul rather than from your mind. From your mind. And um, uh, going back to... Um, I can't remember the name, you know, um, it was asking about like what to do when I, spirituality will tell you exactly do what you need to do to the best capability of what you can, but give a spiritual purpose to it. And when your mind and soul is attached and, and a kind of synced with each other, which is what spirituality is, then you will, you will do exactly what you're supposed to do, you know, get, get the best grades that you can work for it. But along with that, you will put a spiritual lens and a spiritual purpose to what you're doing and why you're earning that degree and where you're going with it and how you want to see yourself and spiritually in few years down the line and how it can serve you and serve the society. So it aligns really, spirituality actually really aligns your actions on a day-to-day -day basis of exactly what you're supposed to do. But just put a spiritual purpose to it that would take away that noise between the mind and the soul. Beautiful point, Padmachi. So I'll tell you one interesting thing. <clears throat> um, I, I was there at the Gartner conference uh, I had gone there for from my office, and one of the things in a leadership speak which came up was very beautiful, very interesting thing. It was saying that because of the lockdown and the last couple of years, because of COVID and all that stuff, people are feeling fatigued, stressed out, right? And uh, you know they're not able to go out, they're not able to socialize as they would would previously. They feel burnt out. There's a lack of motivation, fatigue. All that stuff is happening. And actually, psycholog psychologists, they conducted a study to see how do they get them out of that mindset. So when you are already fatigued, when you're already tired, what do you do to motivate yourself or bring your spirits up? And the top thing that was acknowledged scientifically and by psychologists is do something which is nothing to do with yourself or somebody else. Even a small act will, will uplift your spirits. It is counter counterintuitive because you said, I am tired. Why would I do something for somebody else? But if you do that act, it will have that production of serotonin and anandamine and all that stuff that will lift your spirits and you will feel energized. And that is what he said, which, which I found pretty interesting. So going back to Likhidji's question, yes, you want to become an engineer, but end of the day, you will find satisfaction in doing things which have something to do more than just doing it for yourself. And that is where you would have to start aligning your purpose to. 
So it starts with doing it for somebody else and the higher purpose becomes doing it for the pleasure of God. That consciousness will organically grow as you progress spiritually or you grow spiritually. So in order for us to reach that stage, we have to do the best whatever we are doing right now. We cannot simply shy away from what we are doing and saying something else would be better for me. Whatever situation where we are in is for a particular reason. I cannot say I, I, I was born in this kind of a family, was given this kind of a parent, situation, circumstances, relatives. If not this, I would have done this. No, that's not a fair argument. There's a reason you chose that because of your karmas, because of you know what the lessons God taught are important for you in this life. So we have to make the most of that opportunity. And if somebody has become a cricketer and all of a sudden he starts thinking of becoming a tennis player, obviously it's not a smart understanding, self-assessment. So if you're a student, if you have come here thus far, we have to really be intuitive about what is best for us to do and do the best at that, right? Become the best version of ourselves. And that increases the odds of our success in life as well. All right. A couple of other hands. Yeah. Uh, before going, moving on to the bhajan section, Nitinji, is that okay if quickly we can uh, take Chiragji and Vijayji's question? Sure, let's, let's take that and then we will get to the chanting. Uh, yes. Because a lot of philosophy and devotion always eases that. So, yes, Chiragji and Vijayji. So, my answer is that if we are seeing materially, then obviously Nitya Karms are very much easier in front of warfare. But if you are seeing spiritually, if you are thinking Krishna is with us, then every situation is going to be very, very easy in front of us because nothing is bigger than Krishna. And there is a story of Arjuna when Bhishma took a vow and Arjuna was not worried at all in, at the night. So Krishna was asking why you are not worried. And Arjuna said that if you if my Lord is worried for me, then I don't have to worry at all. And if, if we are tackling every situation by believing that, so I don't think any situation is going to affect us. And there is a phrase, I will conclude that if Krishna wants to kill us, then who can save us? And if Krishna wants to save us, that who can kill us? So by believing like this, I think every situation is going to be very easy. Even this kind of warfare is going to be easy for us. Very true. Very true. Rakhe Krishna, Mare Koi, Mare Krishna, Rakhe, Rakhe Na Koi. I think there's a quotation like that. Yeah. Jisko Rakhe Sai Amar Sake Na Koi. Very true. If it is you are under the tutelage of Krishna, then of course nothing can happen. Beautiful, Chiragji. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, Thank you, Chiragji. Uh, moving on to Vijayji. Radhe Radhe Vijayji, please go ahead. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so I wanted to ask on two broader topics on putting up with uh, circumstances or people. Um, and uh, in one of the conversations, Swamiji beautifully explains, and I wanted to see the application on myself. So in, in one of the aspects he mentions to uh, about Prarabdha Karma and Sanchita Karma, which is based on the gunas that Nitinji has mentioned today. Uh, please correct me if my understanding is wrong here. Uh, we we get the gunas to us in our current life based on the power of the karma that we are supposed to go through. And uh, we, we are also told that uh, the purification happens when um, we get through the very harsh realities of life. So should we, uh, when bad happens, should we consider that as purification or should we put up a fight and say that is wrong and uh, stop it? How should we view and what lens should we have to tackle it? That's number one and asking for fruits. So we are in the corporate world and uh, in the 101s, we are actually taught to ask what we deserve. And uh, and we are also told that even the mother doesn't give until you ask. But then the other, um, in, in the Bhagavad Gita say, do your work and don't ask for uh, fruits. So I'm in a little, uh, it's a gray area for me. Can you please help me there? So it, it doesn't say, I'll don't ask for results it says don't be attached to results oh don't be attached to results there's a bit of a difference between that now i hope you understood that so in the material world of course you can go ahead but you are not attached to that if you are deserving for something there's a farm in asking for it. but you're not attached to the outcome that only if i get it i'll be happy otherwise i'll be shattered and my life is worthless i see attachment that line should not be there 
secondly you said tackling problems right you spoke about that yeah i was just asking about uh, should we how should we um, see the lens see it uh, the purification is also mentioned when bad things happen to us should we uh, consider that it is act of purification or should we put up with people and then stop it it's an opportunity like swami ji says that they, he gives an example of edwin moses at an athlete i think he was the first us athlete to win the gold medals in the olympics and he said what separates you from others he said my ability to tolerate pain more than others so hard situations are a test it's again in that example beautiful story that swami ji tells about the cocoon you know the larva is popping out and it is struggling to make its way out of that cocoon and a little child sees that and it it is struggling so it cuts it open and it forgot that it's only through that struggle that 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 the larva was doing to come out of the cocoon all the liquid would have you know basically helped it grow the wing and would have helped it become a butterfly down the line so the challenges are a way is a fast track way to take ourselves to the next level spiritually if we look at it from that perspective but if you don't look at it that perspective it will break us down right so if you could say that kabir ji have thought that uh, kumar and sunar they say right in kumar spot it breaks down you know when it falls one shot and then sunar you can just beat it uh, if it is gold and it will continue to shine so the point here is those hardships and opportunities are an, it's a more of an opportunity for us to progress faster if we can actually look at it in proper perspective so they say the universe is working like a sandpaper on us to bring out the best in us like maharaj ji has a bhajan also which say ab aur adhik chamkega sona puni puni agni tapane se so people kunti had asked for this boon give me more trouble so that i can think about you god these are actually opportunities to to forklift our spiritual life if you look at it that way and maharaj ji even goes on to extend to say that when god starts bestowing his grace he starts snatching you all the way from you and start giving you more wisdom so that is an opportunity for jeeva atma to progress faster if things are made convenient for you lose control in your life you have absolutely no incentive to get out of this material world same thing happens in tihar jail also right in winters people get served food and get a shelter they don't want to get out of tihar jail so god has not made this material world for our comforts where we are like happily residing here and enjoying the comforts he will make it troublesome but then he will give it to you based on what you are equipped to handle he will not break you so when you are prarabd he gives you that drop and he knows what your capability is he give you a little more than your capability so that you exert yourself and uplift yourself because if he give you too much more than your ability it will break you down and if he keeps you in a comfort zone you will be complacent and lazy to your life so it's an opportunity to take yourself to the next level that's how a spiritualist would look at troubles and miseries thank you nitin ji really appreciate your time okay so are we good yes swati ji you wanted you wanted to be the first one tonight let's have a few chantings too much of philosophical discussion i think if we can bring in some devotional for us that will neutralize it uh, that will be the wrap up our session maybe we can take four sandhya had given a request so in feedback tracker i would go by people who have put in their names on the feedback tracker and maybe four participants we can take and then wrap up our session for today swati ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe swati yeah i can sing the bhajan is it okay yes yeah thank you radhe radhe i wanted to sing this for janmashtami that day but uh, one week gap was there no? so i couldn't sing this so i'd like to sing four to six lines about this okay. yeah uh, yeah jai kanaiya lal ki nand ghar aayo gopal paaje re dekho thal bhar ji me ladwa bate nand ke anand bhayo jai kanaiya lal ki haathi guda pal ki jai kanaiya lal ki पालन सजायो यशोदा मैया झुल झुल पलन में कृष्ण कन्हैया हो रहो धंग धमाल नाचे रे सखी ग्वाल बिरज में लडुआ बटे नंद घर आयो गोपाल 
आजेर ते खुथाल हिरज में लड़ुआ बटे संद कर आयो गोपाल आजेर ते खुथाल हिरज में लड़ुआ बटे थैंक यू राधे राधे थैंक यू ब्यूटीफुल स्वाति जी यू हेल्प्ड अस रियली विच एंड मास्ट मी सेलिब्रेशंस अगेन वेरी नाइस थैंक यू ऑल राइट हु इज नेक्स्ट देन मूविंग ऑन अब पद्मा जी राधे राधे प्लीज प्लीज गो अहेड थैंक यू स्वाति जी Yeah. Since this is enough for that. One thing before, so please fill out the feedback tracker if not already. And I am seeing some uh, remarks that yes, I we do put in these sessions after a, about usually about a week. So you can check it out online as well. Yes, it will be posted. Yes, over to you, Padma Ji. Since it's the um, week of Ganesh Chaturthi, I'm just picking. Um, yeah, sure. Not Krishna, not uh, Ganesh. Hmm. महागणपति 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 मनसा स्मरा महागणपति महागणपति मनसा स्मरा महागणपति महादेवसुत महादेवसुत गुरुगुवनुत महादेवसुत गुरुगुवनुत मारकोटि प्रकाश शात मारकोटि प्रकाश शात महाकाव्य महाकाव्य नाटकाद प्रिय महाकाव्य नाटकाद प्रिय मूषिकवाहन मोद का प्रिय मूषिकवाहन मोद का प्रिय महागणपति महागणपति मनसास्मरा महागणपति मनसास्मरा महागणपति 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 मनसास्मरा Beautiful. Thank you, Padma Ji. That was a good one for the Ganesh Chaturthi that we had. So you helped us live, relive that as well. So thank you very much for that. All right. Please do fill in your interest for tomorrow because we pick usually four people who have put in those feedback. That way, it helps us plan as well. You know, for that. So thank you so much, uh, Padma Ji. Yes, Sandhya, over to you. I think you wanted to. Yeah, Radhe Radhe, Sandhya Ji, please go ahead. Thank you, Padma Ji. Then we have Chandru Ji today as well. So great. Okay. Yeah. Radhe Radhe. This is a Kavali bhajan by Maharaj Ji. I'll just give it a try. Okay. Mujhe ras a gaya hai, tere dar pe sar jukana. Mujhe ras a gaya hai. तेरे दर पे सर झुकाना तुझे मिल गया पुजारी मुझे मिल गया ठिकाना मुझे रास आ गया है तेरे दर पे सर झुकाना मुझे इसका गम नहीं है नहीं है कि बदल गया जमाना मेरी जिंदगी के मालिक कहीं तुम बदल न जाना मुझे रास आ गया है तेरे दर पे सर झुकाना तेरी सावरी सी सूरत 
मेरे दिल में बस गई है अब आ भी जाओ मोहन हर के कोई बहाना मुझे रास आ गया है तेरे दर पे सर झुकाना परवा नहीं है मुझको जो ये दुनिया रूठ जाए गम है तो इसका गम है कहीं तुम न रूठ जाना मुझे रास आ गया है तेरे दर पे सर झुकाना तुझे मिल गया पुजारी मुझे मिल गया ठिकाना ब्यूटीफुल संध्या वेरी नाइस Swami ji had done this kirtan during the signs of happiness right very beautifully sung soulfully beautifully and bhavfully thank you very much yeah. awesome singing sandhya ji we move on to chandru ji chandru ji radhe radhe please go ahead yes we can take chandru ji and then can wrap up the session radhe radhe chandru ji Good oh, I I muted myself. So sorry. No worries. Okay. Um, because of that, this chaturthi, I have this uh, one uh, shloka over here, very short one. Om Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Sama Prava Nirvignam Kuru Me Deva Sarva Karya Shu Sarva Da. on this occasion sarva karya shu sarva da for the first time i have learned attempted to uh, teach myself our point and i was successful with the training of my grandson in he made me do this presentation which i just would like to show you Oh, very nice, Ganesha. Wow. Yes, I I did it on the computer with the PowerPoint. I love your visuals, the way you do all your visuals, and I really wanted to learn to do this. And nice. today on Ganesh Chaturthi, he has helped me do this. So wow. I just wanted to share this with you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that, Chandru Ji. You did a pretty awesome job. I think it it looks very slick thank and. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Do we have time to do arti? Uh, which arti you want to do? Arti will be. The Ganesh arti. That will be a little too long, right? Or you want to do that? Uh, if 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 uh, what is the name? Pallavi is ready. we can do it at the end of your session when you have the time so pallavi ji you can take a lead in doing that so sure let's do that we can so, yes definitely we can do that okay so let's close the session with the aarti in that case thank which you aarti you are singing chandra ji pardon me which aarti you are singing jay ganesh deva i i have jay ganesh jay ganesh jay ganesh deva माता तेरी पार्वती यस पिता महादेव यस वी कैन डू ऑल राइट पल्लवी जी यू कैन कंपनी एंड देन दैट्स हाउ वी कैन रैप अप आवर टुडे सेशन सो यस वेरी नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन um chandru ji let's do our aarti um and then we will wrap up our session wonderful session tomorrow we will conclude our chapter 1 look forward to your another amazing uh, participation tomorrow so let's do our aarti and that's how we can Wrap up our session instead of closing prayers. I think that will be a nice way. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Jai Ganesh, Jai Ganesh, Jai Ganesh, Jai Ganesh, Jai Ganesh, Mata Tiri Parvati, Mati Pita Mahadeva. Jai Ganesh, Jai Ganesh, Jai Ganesh, Deva. 
माता जाकी पार्वती पिता महादेव एक दंत दया बंत चार भुजा दारी एक दंत दया चार भुजा मस्तक सिंदूर सोहे मुसे की सवारी सिंदूर सोहे मुसे की सवारी फूल चढ़े और चढ़े मेवा हार चढ़े फूल चढ़े और चढ़े मेवा नटुन का भूख लगे संत कर भोग लगे संत करे सेवा अंधन को आंख दे को काया अंधन को, को आंख दे को काया भाजन को पुत्र दे निर्धन को माया भाजन को पुत्र दे निर्धन को माया दास जन लाज रखी शंभू धर्म की वारिया माता जाकी पार्वती की शंभू पुत्र वारी सबका मनोरथ पूर्ण करो जाऊ बलिहारी सबका मनोरथ पूर्ण करो जाऊ बलिहारी जय गणेश जय जय गणेश जय गणेश माता जानकी पार्वती पिता महादेव गणपति बाप्पा मौर्या मौर्या उच्चा वर्षी लव करिया All right, very nice, Chandruji. That was very sweet of you and Pallavi ji. Beautifully sung. I think it's the first time we sang the entire Arti. Great. All right, Arti ji had raised her hand. Arti ji, you had a question. Hi, Arti ji. Ah, uh, please raise your hand if I can. Thank you, Chandruji. Beautiful. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Arti ji, yes. No. I don't see Arti ji here. Let me. No, I do. Yes, please go ahead. Radhe, Radhe, Haryam, Neteji. Yes. Okay. 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 So, thank you again, everybody. I know it's late. So, thank you for your wonderful participation. We'll continue with our discussion on some of the more features or salient or points or highlights for the chapter 1 and uh, conclude that session tomorrow so thank you again radhe radhe have a wonderful day and great rest of your evening good night yeah thank you nitin ji for another awesome session thank you everyone for your wonderful participation have a blessed day have a blessed night thank you thank you see you tomorrow see you tomorrow